we're going to see when we open this up is we have a table that looks like any other ignition timing table. So if you're familiar with tuning any kind of standalone systems or even other OEM ECU systems, we're going to see that this table is based on engine speed up top here. And then we also see that we have cylinder air mass in grams on this axis here. So this is going to be a little bit of an odd concept or a departure from what you're going to be used to. Now, most ECUs are going to be using some kind of uh, way to calculate a load and, and the GM ECU is going to be using this cylinder air mass concept. So to quickly kind of go through this, um, we can calculate our cylinder air mass. It's going to be, first we have to take our uh, engine RPM, we have to divide it by 60, and then we're going to get our revolutions per second instead of revolutions per minute. Once we've done that, we have to multiply it by 4, which is going to give us the number of intake cycles that happen on a V8. And then we're going to be taking the number of intake cycles, and we're going to be dividing it by our air mass. So whether we're calculating our air mass from, if we jump in here, from our MAF sensor, or we're uh, using an inferred method or calculated method from our main VE table here, that's going to give us our air mass. So if we divide the number of intake cycles by our air mass, that's going to give us our cylinder air mass, if we jump back in here. And that makes sense because it's essentially going to be giving us how much air mass is rushing into a particular cylinder. Now the, the units of this are in grams here, and we were previously looking at pound per minute or pound per hour values when we were talking about representing our air mass coming in. If we're looking, I jump back in here one more time, into our math calibration here, we were looking at either pound per hour or pound per minute. If we flip through the uh, choices here, we can see that we can get down to, keep going, grams per second. And that grams per second is just a unit scaling value which changes the units of the table. They're still the same units whether we represent them in grams per second or in pound per hour or pound per minute. But it's going to be used, if we jump back into the table one more time here, it's going to be used to represent this cylinder air mass here with internal calculations. So when we make a change to our VE table or our MAF calibration scale, we are going to be effectively rescaling our ignition timing. Now that's substantial because if you're driving, let's just say, if we highlight this area right here, on a bone stock car, if you were driving and uh, you were just going through this range right here as you're operating in normal steady state conditions, you're going to be delivering this amount of spark timing. But if we go and miscalculate or misrepresent the air mass to the ECU, that's going to throw off this cylinder air mass calculation and it's going to put us in a different spot. We might find that now we're operating our engine here if we're reporting a little bit different cylinder air mass. So we can see the timing difference here is going to be about four or five, six degrees and that can be enough to make it knock. So we have to be aware of what we're doing and the changes that we're making when we're looking at going in and rescaling our MAF curve or our volumetric efficiency table because ultimately it's going to give us a different air mass calculation or 